you know, it's not all about motivation. There is one quote, motivation will help you start, but discipline will help you continue. Yo Gorillas, welcome to the Athletes Insider Podcast by Gorilla Nation. My name is Phil and today's guest is a special guest and uh, yeah, one of the most influential people in street workout and calisthenics from Bulgaria, the planche god he's called and I'm really happy to welcome you to the show, Viktor Kamenov. Hey Phil, thank you so much for the interview, it's a big honor for me. It's also a big honor for me, um, big honor for the people. Uh, we received over 300 questions uh, for this interview. We picked out the best. And to kick off, who is Viktor Kamenov? How do you present yourself? I'm Viktor Kamenov from Bulgaria, Sofia. I'm currently 22 years old and I'm doing calisthenics for already eight years and almost nine. Wow. So you started quite young, right? Yeah, quite young. I was I was 30, 14 years old. And in how, the beginning, uh, I looked at it like a game, really. <laughs> it was like a game. Most of my peers were playing video games, but I was going to the bars and doing pull-ups. Okay, and how did you get in touch with the sport? How was your first uh, impression? First impressions from YouTube. Definitely from YouTube, like all the all the other athletes. Uh, there was one guy, Hannibal for King, also Dennis Minin from Ukraine. Uh, and I was really inspired from them, wanted to do the same things as they were, they were doing. Also gymnastics, I was always a fan of gymnastics, even from a little kid. Uh, we, have, we have one living legend in Bulgaria, Jordan Yovchev. And I remember even as a kid watching his routines on the Olympics and really wanted to, to do those things, especially the statics. Uh, and another reason also my uncle is training and he's still training and, um, uh, even now he's, he's my inspiration. When I, when I see myself, uh, making excuses, I just look at him and see, man, he's 50 years old, 50 years old, and he's still training. No excuses. Wow. So he's, uh, also planching or like basics or. Uh, not that much planching because at the time when he started planch was, uh, not that popular move, even in the gymnastics planch was, uh, not done that, uh, that often. Okay. But you never did gymnastics yourself, right? Never, never, never. I've, I've always tried to imitate gymnastics and, uh, mostly the strength part, of course. I'm, I'm not into the floor or, or uh, s some other equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, yeah, take us um, to your to your um, 13, 14 year old Viktor Kamenov. Um, how did you look like? How did your first training sessions go? Did you directly do your pull ups, or was it also difficult for you to to learn these moves? Well, it was. The first, my first tries were in 2011 and there were just some pull-ups between the classes in school, in school. <laughs> but I don't, I don't found this as, uh, as my initial steps. My, my, my starter was in 2012 when I really got into the sport. And my, the first thing that I was, uh, mostly motivated to do was handstand because it was just interesting for me. At this point, I was not aware of what Maltese is, what planches. It was just boring for me. I, I knew that there were some in, in uh, the, the gymnastic, there were some moves like this, but I was more about one arm handstand uh, or just regular handstand. So my main, my main uh, focus was on the handstand, yeah. Wow. Okay. So from training beginning to the first handstand, how long did, it, did you take? Ah, not that much. Not that much, really. It's around around three, four months. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's hard to say what does it mean learned handstands because mm. handstand can be, can be hold for 20 seconds with bad form or for two minutes with perfect form. Of course, you can't get that for three months. You need much more. True. The question from the community came, how long did you only train basics? In the beginning, as I told you in 2011, I was, that was my period where I was doing only basics. But then after 2012, I had no period only doing basics. I was even more focused on the skills, plus basic of, of course, but uh, 
just from the beginning till now, I always do basics, even though I'm not that much focused on Instagram of showing them. They're really important just to give you that initial strength. Okay, so basics for you mean which exercises in, uh, in particular? Uh, in the beginning, just push-ups, uh, dips, pull-ups, just the normal one, regular. Okay. They, they, they sound like cliche, but in fact, they help, really. For beginners, they're so important. And even today, they help you for healthy joints and tendons? Of course, of course. It's, yeah. it's steps that need to be done. Yeah. Like, just from the beginning, try to, to execute them properly. For example, pull up with locked elbows. Yeah. You know, you, you can't injure yourself. You can't injure yourself. From the beginning, you must start implementing proper technique. So then when you gradually get higher level, you won't get injured. For example, you've seen all the complicated moves, you have a straight elbows. So if you skipped that proper technique from the beginning, then you have some problems later. Okay, that's already good advice, I guess, for all the beginners, beginnings um, mm -hmm. to, to really focus on the good form for basics um, because otherwise it, it yeah, doesn't prevent you from injuries, etc. Switching to today, how does your workout schedule look like today, today in 2020? Today in 2020, mostly planches and some little front levers. This is it. I'm training five days a week. I'm resting two days, which are not total rest. I'm just doing some flexibility, handstands. Uh, but I'm not focusing that much on endurance and freestyle since I'm not uh, competing anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're not competing anymore and not planning to compete? Well, look, there is, there is difference between what I think and what I, I feel I want. Uh, because in 2017 and 18, when I competed for the last time, I devoted so much time to, to preparing for competition, but I, I saw low revenue from that. Mm -hmm. And it's okay for one guy who is 17 years old, 16 years old, who is helped by his parents. Uh, he can devote all his time to trainings and then go get top place and go back and get nothing. It, it, but it's okay. But once you get, get uh, older, you see that you need to do something else to, uh, to get more revenue from what you're doing, really, from, from the time that you spent. So... Uh, I started uh, with the workshops in 2017 and I found it really much profitable for me and also I can say not less uh, enjoyable for me because uh, by this way I can somehow help the people. So you, like you say five days a week, um, uh, mm -hmm. planche, front lever and uh, so you're not you don't planch every day because this was a question from the community, especially beginners. They somehow get this mentality from the calisthenics scene. You will have to work mm. out every day. No, that's a big mistake. Really. That's a big mistake for beginners. And I was doing that in the beginning. And what I saw was low progress because you can train with soreness and pain. You train hard one day and then, and then the next day you were cute. That's, that's more often for the beginners. But even, even for me, right now, if I do a really hard training, the next day, I'll try to, to concentrate at least on some other pressure. For example, I'll go more on the pool if I did push today. So planche, I'm training four times a week, currently right now. Of course, uh, sometimes it's different depending on my time that I have, but at least four times I'm trying just to maintain my level. Wow. Mm -hmm. To maintain your level. So your goals right now are to maintain the level or to even go... My goals higher? right now are mainly to maintain my level. And I have some thoughts for some combos that I've always wanted to do, but I still haven't. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on them, but really slowly, really slowly. Yeah, I'm not rushing because I don't want any injuries. I understand. And you're getting more and more experience. You're also uh, like learning a lot. And uh, you just came out with your new planche program um, a few days ago. Um, so you want to talk about this one? Yeah, first, uh, again, thanks a lot for mentioning it. It's 
it's a great support for me. Uh, yeah, I've released a new planch program, which is more devol- devoted for uh, high-level guys, which already have planch and want to learn uh, presses and push-ups. But also, I have another ebook which is for total beginners, the guys who are hardly even doing a tuck planch and need to go to straddle planch and full planch. So yeah, I mainly explain uh, my way of training there, how I used to train, how I train right now for uh, the best results and fastest and healthier results without any injuries uh, because it's really important the way how you train. It's not only about doing poor attempts. Mm. Yeah. Also, also to the programmers, are, there are some videos that uh, will help you better understand the moves. And maybe maybe one thing that I counted as a bonus because nobody uh, else provided is personal contact. So if they have some problems with their progress and according to, to the ebook, they can always ask me. Wow. Okay. Sounds uh, really nice because I think you, with your results, etc., you have a different approach, um, especially that because you didn't, you don't come from gymnastics, you have your mm-hmm. own approach, you you self-taught uh, a lot, like you learned a lot yourself. Yeah, of course, um, everything was by myself because uh, I remember in 2013, there were no tutorials. There were, let's say, uh, two or three tutorials on planche, which um, I'm really questioning them how they uh, how they're good. And uh, most of the time I was not aware what to do and everything was just tries, tries and fails and tries and fails. Uh, get, got some injuries, but I've always, always tried to not rush. That, that's the most important thing that helped me uh, still be healthier till that day. And that's an important thing. That's maybe also an advice that every beginner can take with, it, uh, with him. Um, it's really Uh, a lot of people see this, uh, I don't know, eight month full planch journey. Uh, mm-hmm. I learned the full planch in three months. And it's really, the community is really about rushing. And uh, a lot of people are wanting to, to learn the planch really, really quick. But if you think long long term and you want to be healthy, even though uh, you have like eight, nine years of uh, street workout calisthenics like you, um, this is the way, you know, you need to be patient, right? You know, the thing is that right now, Uh, people see their idols. They have a lot of information of what their idols are doing and beginners from just pulling up uh, and dips try to go directly to hard moves like Maltese. And in my time, uh, I had no that reference from my idols. My idols were not doing Maltese. Like just just some guys from the gymnastic that I told you, but uh, I, was, I, I was still thinking that it's gymnastic, it's olympic sport and i must stay away from that keep focusing on the handstand keep focusing on the muscle ups you remember the old calisthenics um yeah so it was different because we had um different uh, references yeah that's true so yeah for everybody uh, we will talk later about it as well um for everybody who is interested in this uh we you offered the, our community uh, also a 10% discount on all your planch programs yes, uh, with course. the code coronation 10 so everything is in the description um what i am asking myself if i watch your performances etc is um is everybody capable of um having this performance that you have with the right training approach with um Yeah, like normal genetics, let's call it. Uh, you, you said normal genetics, yes. With normal genetics, uh, considering to what a normal genetics should be for calisthenics, of course, yes. But I can't hide it. Uh, the height and the weight are really a big factor. If you're two meters high and uh, 150 kilograms, <laughs> I think the answer is uh, totally clear. Um, so yeah, of course, everybody can get high level. I'm not sure if the same level as me, but for sure high level and uh, clearer, clearly better progress if they implement a better pro- better approach, of course. Okay. Um, yeah. So your approach right now is um, patience, so not, not rushing. Yeah. Um, your approach is resting two days per week. Um, if you're sore on, uh, on pushing movements, you switch to pulling movements. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else are your secrets? Let's call them because everybody's asking what are the secrets of Victor? What, what's, what's his secret? No, the secret, <laughs> the secrets are so simple and they're not secrets. I don't know. Consistency, 
consistency. That's the main thing. I'm not consistent on Instagram, you see, but I'm consistent on everyday life, what I'm training. On my trainings, I'm always consistent and uh, discipline, also discipline, because you can't always count on motivation. There will be days when you're back from work from university at, let's say, six, seven o'clock, and you'll be dead. You don't want to, to train, but discipline is what that is that that will help you continue training you know it's not all about motivation motivation will help you start there is one quote motivation will help you start but discipline will help you continue that's that's a good one and that's uh, what what a lot of athletes say if you don't implement them consistently they're not going to work Uh, is it possible to learn planche only by planche leaning, uh, only by the leaning exercises? Is it possible? Only leans and no attempts. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it's impossible, it's, of course. Because we, we, we do attempts. Yeah. Okay. So it's the mixture of attempts, leans, and also some assistance work? or Some attempts, some leans, some basics in the end, but mostly attempts. Mostly attempts. That's the most important thing. Leans will help you not that much for the strength, but uh, more about preparing yourself uh, for the training, uh, not to get injured yourself. And the basics in the end help you for conditioning, getting more strength in uh, the proper the proper way, activating properly the body. But the most important things are the attempts. And I was doing only attempts till 2014 or 15, uh, and. As you, as you see in my old videos, that helped me, but not enough, not enough. Then I started thinking like, I need to put some other things. Uh, I need to train more professional. Also, I was training in a gymnastic gym, so I was seeing how gymnasts are training. So I, I uh, added some basic workouts in the end of the training, which is specifically for planche and push, for push skills, uh, not normal basis I mentioned in the beginning. So, yeah. Okay. So you talked about the leans, uh, which is, I think, clear to everyone. Uh, and makes sense to prepare yourself for the workout, to prepare your tendons, your joints, etc. And let's talk about the middle, the attempts, uh, the real workout, let's call it. Um, how do one, does one make the best progress? Is it with resistance bands? Is it by doing the tuck planche the whole uh, time if he is not able to do a straddle planche? It depends on what level you are. For example, if you already have some basic strength, you can do, let's say, four or five seconds straddle planche. A good option is to separate the trainings, those parts and the attempts, separate them by two parts. In one day, you will focus on the form. On the other day, you will focus on the hold. So by this way, you can, you can uh, have them both in a high level trained. And the resistance band that you ask me, uh, I don't even put that in the attempts part, but it's more about the basics. Okay. And it's not that much for, for strength, but I look at it for brain work because I put, I put my phone away and uh, record myself and see all the details, where, what I need to fix. And then the next training, I already have that feeling when my body, where my body is positioned. So... Yeah, this is the main approach that I'm even doing right now and that uh, I um, tell to the people, I recommend to the people, separate both. Uh, but of course, for total beginners, no need for separation. Just just pure attempts, just pure attempts and some uh, additional basic exercises which are really easy but are not not the normal, most known pull-ups and push-ups. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, another question uh, next to resistance bands was also if rings accelerate or uh, make sense as, as a good workout uh, to build strength and planche? Of course, but it's different from the ground and don't count on rings to help you on ground. Mm -hmm. You see even uh, guys on Olympic level in gymnastics so hard on, on rings, doing zanetis, full planches. So I don't know, just amazing level, but when they go to the ground, They are much, uh, much weaker than me and than so many athletes, calisthenics athletes. So they're not connected. If you want to get stronger on rings, train on rings. If you want to get stronger on ground or parallels, train there. 
Okay. Mm. The training method, you know, like there mm. are a lot of training methods, uh, greasing the groove, uh, EMOM, uh, like basics, like endurance just for basics, um, high intensity, high volume, drop sets, supersets, all this. Is there uh, something that you can uh, like you like, or is there something that you don't like at all? I can't say that there is any bad way of training and all those things that you tell me maybe you also mentioned set and reps these are uh not things that i usually train and for sure not something that i do right now uh definitely it's really important when you prepare for competition to work on your endurance because uh there that's one of the most important things it's not only about how much you hold an element but also about how many minutes you can be alive on the stage <laughs> because right now you see i can be in a really good condition for 40 seconds video on instagram <laughs> but if i go on a competition which is even only on statics i'll be dead in in one minute because i'm not training endurance uh when i was competing i was in the gym and doing my sets for three hours only only sets without stop And that helped me improve my endurance. But right now I'm looking more about the quality of a single attempt. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's my main advice for those who want to compete. Just just make your sets. Okay. One or two minutes, everything combined. And also on another day, keep the focus on the single attempts as I'm training right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, if you do the, your planche attempts, uh, do you what do you prefer like long rests in between or uh, high high intensity so a small re uh, rest in between what is your advice again uh, it depends of uh, for what you're training okay right now i train as much as it allows me to do a perfect attempt that's that's the the main uh, thing that i follow of course for for uh, competitions for days where you're training endurance It's totally a good option to do, for example, full planche hold, wait 20 seconds or even less, and then do again full planche hold. You know, these are things that will help you uh, make better endurance, but only counting on this type of training is not enough because you can't, uh, you can't develop that uh, good form and condition of a single attempt. Yeah. So it mainly depends on what you're aiming for. If there is no single right answer. Okay. Great. A question that was upvoted on uh, YouTube and you already smiled when I uh, sent it to you in the beginning is um, does the bent arm planche help for the planche? Okay. Well, that's one of the most common questions for beginners and the answer is no because if you want to, to have a planche, I mean a real planche with straight arm, you must work on straight arm. Bent arm will never help you gain that strength in the elbow, in the shoulder, just because the position is different. Maybe will will help you partly for developing core strength, but counting on bent arm planche will never help that much, really. You see, you see so many old school athletes, again, I'll mention Hannibal for King, who is doing this type of planche for, I don't know, probably 30 years, but He still still can't do a full planche. It just don't help him because it's just a different move, different muscle. Of course, group. it's different move, totally different move. Uh, I can of course add that it help it will help you gain some strength for the full, uh, for the planche pushups because okay. planche pushups is transition between those two variations with straight arms and bent arms. So. It's important when you start training the push-ups to also to probably make some holes for that disposition. Um, yeah, but but only for planche it will not help you. Okay. A question that was also making me smile. I don't know how you think about it. Um, two people asked: um, Is it true? Did you break your fingers and uh, now have metal plates in your fingers, uh, so you are stronger on finger planche? Uh, yeah, actually, that's the reason. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Good. Um, how important? <laughs> so 
<laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but like, you know, if you say like this, people will believe. Um, and there are people who didn't ask this question. Um, That's why I will smile. Yeah. That's why I will smile. Okay. Yeah. How important is core workout, especially lower back uh, on the way to the planche? Does it make sense to especially work on that? Of course. Of course, it's uh, strengthening the lower back and the waist will help, it, will help you and prevent you from going to that banana planches. Because you see so many guys keep their sh shoulder high, but when it's about a longer hold, the first part that goes down will be the lower back. Mm -hmm. So putting a little bit focus on gaining that strength right there will help you and uh, will prevent you from doing this uh, type of not proper planche. Yeah. Of course, there are some basic exercises uh, which are mostly done in the gymnastics and uh, I've seen them in the gymnastic gym and I still do them in, in home. Um, so, yeah. Is there an exercise that you can explain that uh, helps? Yeah, I can, I can explain one exercise that I still do. It's uh, lay down on a box or something which is high around 50 centimeters. Uh, it must be on your, you must lay on your stomach. And then just lift your legs up. And uh, by, this, by this way, you feel the pressure in the lower back. It's simple as that. Okay. Uh, also, additional, you can put some weights. You do it uh, straddle or full with uh, legs? Together? Full, full. Yeah. Okay. Full. So, beginners, if it's too hard, they can do uh, straddle or tuck? Of course, they can do straddle. They can, they can do even tuck to full extensions. Yeah. They can go do only straddle lifting. They can do full lifting. See, you you must check how you feel it. Yeah, mm. makes sense. Um, yeah, people asked for a, a day in the life of Viktor Kaminov. Take us in your daily life. How does one typical day look like? Well, it's really different. For example, I'll tell you today what happened. I woke up early, like 6.30. I made some training, then I... Uh, prefer for an interview after the interview i'll go to the hospital because unfortunately my mom is there oh. and she can't be with us in christmas mm. uh then i'll go back i'll do some studies for a university then i'll answer all the instagram messages that people send me uh then i work on my new program fix some problems in the site and it's different every day bro <laughs> <laughs> it's i just tell you what's my schedule for today Okay. Yeah. So uh, your your uh, work, your studies, um, what is your yeah. profession? Architecture. I study right now architecture. It's my already fourth year. Yeah. Okay. So you're soon finished. Yeah, soon finished. One of the main questions also concerning your, maybe also a little bit your private life was... Um, why do I, aren't you so active on YouTube, on Instagram? And uh, you already told me life doesn't always work um, as, as, you, as you plan. Um, what is the reason? Well, the main reason is that I don't find that much time for getting active. Of course, I can be more active, but I need to drop the quality. Mm -hmm. I don't want to drop the quality. Sometimes I think that it's not only about quality, it's also quantity and that... I need to, to fix the balance. So in the coming months, I'll work on, on that. Okay. So mm -hmm. we can expect to see a little more from you. Yes, still. yes. I have a lot of plans. Really, I have a lot of plans and ideas in my mind. We'll see how it works. Great. Good luck for that already. Thank you. Um, Let's maybe sum up all your workout experience, your workout advice. Um, what are the main three things that if people improve them in their workout, they would get much better results? The three things. Well, there are a lot of things, but if we need to sum up them, will be discipline, consistency, and training smart, knowing what you're doing. These are the three things. Okay. If we go a little bit more into detail, um, what, what makes them important? Well, even as I already said, if you have a proper training method, but you're not consistent, you'll not achieve anything. And of course the opposite. So I think that explains everything. 
So you think mm -hmm. if I buy your program, I won't be, uh, I, if I, and I, I just have it on my computer, on my mobile phone, I don't follow it. I won't be a planche piece, right? <laughs> well, probably if it's only on your phone, it will help you a little bit. Okay. Just, just because of the energy, okay. but, uh, <laughs> but not that much. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this discipline, um, it's important to get up even though uh, you're, you're not motivated. Or... Yes, of course. Today, I woke up at 6.30 6 to train. For sure, I was not motivated to train. On a Saturday? On a Saturday at 6.30, yeah. But I don't have a choice. I had to do my tasks later. Talking about uh, prevention, also injuries, um, yeah, I think uh, play a role in, in a lot of athletes' careers and people were mm -hmm. interested about, about your injuries in your career. Well, the biggest injury I remember was 2015 on my wrist. Uh, then this summer I also had an injury on my shoulders uh, because some weighted stuff and I was out from the basics for a long time since it was pandemics and I had to train only statics at home. Uh, so I got some, some shoulder injury, which a little bit put me out of, uh, out of condition. I can't lie. Yeah. And that's partly one of the reasons why I was not active in, in the summer. Yeah. But, uh, it's really important that those moments not to stop, not to give up and to listen to the doctors because some doctors told me that it's over and it's, it's, it's normal, totally normal. Always go to two or three doctors because before you make any decision. So yeah, just, just keep training slightly some, some things that will, uh, help you maintain the strength and in the same time, not get worse with the injury. Mm -hmm. And of course, it depends on the injury. For me, it was just a really hard tendonitis in uh, shoulder inflammatory. But if it's it's a bigger pro problem, of course, there must be other fixes. You're like in the calisthenics scene now since eight or nine years. Um, how do you see the development of the sport? Um... Man, it's changed so much. So much. Uh, at first, you remember they were all those guys doing muscle-ups, band arm planches, then came the Russian guys with the perfect static moves, Maltesis, then came the dynamic, and right now there are three main groups, the statics, the dynamics, and the complete guys, which are, I feel that they're always fighting each other because all the competitions are more for the complete guys. While there are always one static guy who is telling that the completeness is shit, <laughs> and that uh, there must be a specific competition only for statics. And there's always another guy on dynamics who is uh, saying, oh, we don't have a competition only for dynamics. So in the future, I think about uh, separating those three disciplines because I feel so much different from the kid who is 14 years old and doing 900. You know, mm -hmm. I feel that he's just doing another sport. He's not doing calisthenics as my sport. It's so different disciplines. So... Definitely separating three of them will, will be uh, really important. Also, there is four discipline, like the muscle-ups, the weighted stuff. Many people also talk about putting our sport in the Olympics. But since I'm really into gymnastics and I know in details what's happening there, I can say that there is already a sport which is similar to the calisthenics and it's much on a higher level. Uh, also, if you want to put it on the Olympics, we need to set uh, certain rules. And the beauty of our sport is that we don't have rules and it's free sport. Yeah. And everybody can implement uh, new skills every time on stage. Uh, well, if we, if we put it on the Olympics, all the rules will be in the brackets and they will be preset with a uh, pointing system which in my opinion is nothing bad about it. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and there are already some, some competitions like for example, the burning gate cup, uh, it focuses more. Uh -huh. on yeah, aesthetics. of course. Uh, burning gate cup, uh, they were trying to imitate somehow the methods of the, in the gymnastics competitions. But in my opinion, if it depends on me, I'll fix some things. Yeah. Okay. I was competing there two years 
uh, two times and I saw some things that can be better. Okay. But they work. True. Um, yeah. What are your goals for 2021? Maybe to sum up and uh, to come to an end of the interview. Uh, this mm -hmm. interview will come out on Christmas, um, on Christmas Day. So uh, just before the new year, what, what are your mm -hmm. goals for the next year? My main goals are continue developing on Instagram, continue posting good videos, even though they're not that long and uh, full of so many skills. But I want, again, to focus on the quality, but have that balance, quality, quantity. Again, uh, developing my website, uh, my programs. I have 10 more programs that I want to release and I started writing them right now, one after another. Uh, also YouTube, I have some, some ideas for videos there uh, because I started three years ago, but uh, for one reason I stopped and three years later, I think I will be back. Um, and hopefully, hopefully if the pandemic is over, I want to start my workshops again because that's uh, certainly the thing that bring, brings me the most joy seeing seeing the world and in the same time helping the sport to develop great yeah that would be nice i still remember your workshop in vienna uh your small you had a small workshop on the body yes, day yes, there yes. Uh, which was really of course nice. all those things that i'm telling you are uh just uh, in the area of sport that i'm planning and i think this is the the topic of this video yeah mm. true Yeah, we're nearly finished with the interview. We still have some quick questions, quick answers uh, at the end. Um, what do you prefer, pizza or burger? Pizza, of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, do you prefer... No way to compare both of them, no way. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you, are you a dog or a cat person? Uh, first, I'm allergic. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> so uh, it's hard to say, but probably, probably cat because it's a cleaner animal. Okay. Maybe, maybe, but honestly, neither of them. Um, do you have a favorite location for holidays? For holidays, uh, I go to, I have a house in uh, one, one uh, small city around, uh, the capital Sofia so sometimes I go there and I like it because uh, it's it's uh, not noisy like the big city and uh, I can totally focus on myself myself my work without any disturptions great um, do you have I know it's a big question but do you have a favorite calisthenics athlete or somebody that you look up to for mm. Blanche inspiration During the years, I had many favorite athletes and I still admire them, but maybe it will sound a little bit narcissistic, but recently I, I get the most of the motivation from my old videos. Okay. Really, because uh, looking at what you did before uh, make you think that all these things can come one more time if you put the needed effort. And of course, I can mention some guys that I really admire. Uh, For example, from the static game, my friend Netko, really strong guy. Uh, also, Valentin, you had an interview with him. We both are friends. Great. Uh, one guy, Dai Long, I like his form, really. Yeah. Many athletes, many athletes. There are so many new guys doing great stuff. Somebody asked, do you have, uh, like, do you have an opinion on the question, uh, who is the strongest plancher in the world? Is there, there one? There is no one stronger plancher in the world. Okay. One is stronger in push-ups. The other is stronger in presses. And the third is in hold. There is no such a thing as stronger athlete. Plus, the level is really volatile. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes somebody is like the top, but then he'll be down. And then a year ago, some new guy comes and... It's it's no no strongest athlete. There is no strongest athlete. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite book? Favorite 
book. Uh, recently, I read uh, Think and Get Rich. Uh, I can't say that it's my favorite, but it had some influence on me. It's it's probably not that famous among the calisthenic athletes, but it's more on the finance world. But I, I found some connection with the sport that can help me see the sport, not that plain, not that confined, but to see that there are more possibilities. It's not only about uh, going to competitions, competing or posting videos. You can do much more. You just need to believe in yourself, visualize, think. That's true. It's a really, really good book. It's uh, already over a hundred years old. Um, it's, yes, it's one, yes. <laughs> one of the best-selling books worldwide. Um, so it yeah, really, it's... worldwide, it's a big cliche, I can say. It's a big cliche. Mm -hmm. People, and it's it's like the the reference for uh, for self improvement book. Yeah, yeah, that's true. For self improvement, books. and there are a lot of mindset things in it. Work harder than people expect from you. That's yes. also that's one exactly. thing that I think that if you implement them, also in the sport, will help. It's not all, all about uh, get rich and think and get rich. It's yeah. also think and get stronger. Or you can you can look at it from from other point of view. Mm -hmm. that's true we will put it in the description think and grow rich from uh, napoleon hill um and yeah. Uh, yeah a question that is always asked i usually ask it in the beginning but now i ask it here your height and weight uh 170 height and uh, weight it i dropped from 70 71 to 65 right now first because of an injury and uh, second uh, probably because of not proper nutrition recently I'm, i don't have that much time to prepare my food uh, uh, how i should and yeah but but it's totally okay it's it also helps me a little bit get uh, lighter skills because the lighter you are the better it is but i'm really trying not to drop under 65 okay that's important for me Do you have a favorite calisthenics event that you've visited? Calisthenics events? Uh, well, my most favorite events are my workshops at first okay. place. Yeah, and the second, uh, World of War Heroes. I really liked uh, the event, the hype, the system, the judging system, which uh, in my opinion is the most clever uh, since now. Also, from the competitions that I took part, street workout, ultimate battles, especially 2017. Uh, again, I can also add Moscow, World, uh, the World Federation's competitions were, were my, my initial steps in the, in the competition started. Yeah. And then last question, if you can only do one planche variation for the rest of your life, which one would it be? Oh, um maltese maltese <laughs> yeah maltese <laughs> okay nice yeah then uh we're coming to an end uh how can people get in touch with you how can they um ask you stuff instagram my instagram page always drop one message and i have a uh, time in the day usually i do it three times a week where i check what people ask me and answer them great so same mm -hmm. here then with training consistency and patience so if somebody writes you he shouldn't expect an answer in the next 10 minutes yeah well, no, of course not in the <laughs> next 10 minutes and usually i answer him and the next time i will answer will be, him will be in the next two days because if i wait him to answer and then i answer it it's getting uh, unlimited conversation and yeah. <laughs> i usually have 20 people a day who Who write me and you know uh i need to save my time somehow i have a lot of, lot of things to do makes sense mm -hmm. yeah and for all the people who want to really learn from you and who really profit from your experience in in workout uh, they have the possibility to get your planch programs for beginners and the new one mm -hmm. for uh, intermediate for uh, professionals yeah with 10 percent discount with Gornation code. Yes. So uh, everything is in the description. Gornation 10 saves you 10%. And uh, thanks, Victor, for your time. Thanks for It the was interview. It pleasure. Thank you so much for the invitation, really. 
it uh, it means a lot to me to the people and uh, yeah wishing you all the best wishing the best for your mother for everything for your whole family for the christmas time and um, yeah thanks everyone for listening and uh, thanks for supporting this series give us a thumbs up a comment if you liked it and victor you can end the episode and say goodbye to the community bye wish you all the best and always train clever <laughs>